Hi friends! In this video we're going to be melting some aluminium and casting some circular clamps, a bit like these, to clamp onto a big old pipe like this one here. Let's do it! got this from a, a very old project and it always feels a bit funny breaking up an old project but I really could use this bit of material here. There is plenty of wood I could use for this, but when you're making a pattern, the problem with wooden ones is you have to do all kinds of finishing and painting because Green Stand really wants to stick to wood. That's why I'm quite hopeful about this scrap material. I'm not actually sure what it is, but some kind of water impervious plasticky stuff. The other benefit of this is obviously not having to worry about the grain direction at all. And so there came a point in our evolution when we didn't guide life by distrusting our instincts. And had to think about it and had to purposely arrange and discipline and push our lives around in accordance with foresight and words and systems of symbols, accountancy, calculation and so on. And then we worry. Once you start thinking about things, you worry as to whether you've thought enough. To put together the pieces of this pattern I'm just using hot melt glue as a sort of gap filling adhesive. A big flat bit of metal like the table saw really helps because it keeps the pattern flat but also the hot melt glue just won't stick to it. So one of the moulds is basically done. Looking at it I'm kind of happy with the way it is. We'll see whether it actually pulls out of the sand or not. Although it's going to end up being two pieces the idea is to make it one piece so it'd fit on the lathe nicely. I'm not sure about these bits here. I'm going to try and cast these two at a time if the flask will allow. Uh, I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure about these bits here though. I think maybe for the second one I'm just going to make them uh, one solid piece instead of having this sort of slimming out detail here. Those are the bits that's going to kind of hold the shelves. Veg Oil Guy. Check out his channel on YouTube, I'll leave a link below. He's got some great ideas, one of which is this feeder cup for the molten aluminium. I'm perverting his idea slightly by using a yoghurt pot and a cream pot to create it. So I'm going to put my pattern against the metal plate here, something like that. This big plate's going to be like a big heat sink, so it'll obviously cool it quickly. And then I've got my feeder cups up above, and they should keep the aluminium nice and warm. So ideally that will stay liquid and be continually feeding as it shrinks below and not creating any voids and that kind of thing. But we'll see how we go. The first thing I need to do is to get rid of this little whatever that was there. Maybe the sock's too thick. <laughs> there we 
Okay. so good. I can see I could have packed the sand better around here. too bad let's leave aside the use of the tableware here and just focus on my mistake of cutting this runner or gate uh, I'm not quite sure what you call it in my post game diagnosis as it were I realized but I didn't make it anywhere near big enough and as it was in contact with the chill that big metal plate it's gonna freeze up really quite quickly meaning those feed cups are essentially useless because the material can't get through so yeah in future renditions larger gates will be used another great youtuber on metal casting is old foundryman okay, that's too much. i was inspired by his extensive use of compressed air when he's preparing his patterns but I soon gave up on that idea when I realised my air blower gun has two settings, either on or off, and nothing in between. With the green sand mould all ready, scare quotes, uh, it was time to light up the forge. I was quite excited, it was a nice sunny day and the humidity was low, so it was good conditions. And then the gas ran out.
With the leftover aluminium I was doing a bit of an experiment by filling some old glass bottles that were perfectly cylindrical, thinking this might make useful sort of turning blanks, but actually the bottles just kind of shattered everywhere. Luckily they were in sand though, so it didn't really matter, it just meant lots of shattered glass which was a pain to clear up and sieve out of the sand. Okay, look at that. It's remaining liquid there. And the chill obviously chilled it very quickly because those ones haven't risen up anything like as much. Just as I thought it was safe to put my camera away and walk away and carry on, that one broke, spurting a little river of aluminium that <laughs> I then put back in the melting pot. As soon as the aluminium felt solid enough, I broke it out of its green sand mould which incidentally really highlighted my lack of any proper tongs. Quenching I'm doing here is probably not strictly necessary as it was so close to that big metal chill which will have cooled it quite fast and it's not a huge casting anyway. I'll talk more about the pros and cons of quenching in a separate video about heat treatment. Here's a little tip for you, as well as wearing the face shield, do wear safety boots. I didn't even realise this had happened, but you can see a dollop has landed there and melted through the lace. question of filing off some bits like that, that sort of edge there. So this is the finish here, I'm not actually sure which I prefer. After turning it on the lathe, this is what we've got. And it looks great there, but then if you've got any little voids, which unfortunately this one has, then it shows up a lot compared to this which doesn't seem to have any of those same kind of amount of voids to it. When you find yourself idle or stagnant, it's important that you move from place to place. But if your knees start buckling, your stomach starts rustling, your ankles all swell. Oh hell, well, I've been like that too, man. And here's what I do. Yeah. Break it down to the only mountain time. Break it down to the dirt and the ground. Feeling out just the sound of your future. Hearing now is profoundly you. Hearing now is profoundly you. Profile you.
snakes. I don't want to treat. So here we are, well pleased with how that's working. Number one of six of these ridiculously over-engineered bracket things that I want to make. I'm going to make some design changes on the pattern for the other ones so that I don't need to do quite so much after casting machining on the metal and just to change the shape a little bit. I'm going to do a video on the DIY heat treatment of cast parts like this as well, so check that out. I'm sure you'll do this whole thing differently and I'd love to hear how you do it. Please get in touch in the comments below, I'd love to hear from you friends. Otherwise, it's been a complete blast, thanks for joining me and I'll see you in the next one.